actually do. All right. Good morning, right? Good evening. Yes. Amen. Amen. Good. Okay. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coming. And thank you for listening. Being with us this evening, midweek service. We are in the Gospel of John, and you can get ready by turning to your Bibles. Chapter 8 in John, John 8. Um, so we have, uh, tomorrow we have Pastor Keith, uh, TNT, 7 o'clock. Saturday, um, I think we're going to change that. We'll just do a teaching, Facebook teaching Saturday, and then we're, we'll be still doing the outreach because that is wonderful, okay, with signs and everything. And um, um, so bring your hats. Smoking last week. Okay. Okay. You're out of here. There you go. Okay, so let's, uh, John chapter 8, and we are this evening uh, in verse 40. Where are we at? 42? Yeah, 42. So, Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your amazing love. Um, when things get so crazy out there, we can come and you put us under your wings and uh, we get to rest in you. We get to just to forget about everything that's gone on uh, today, you know, yesterday, this whole week, all these details, all these situations, things that upset us even uh, because they're, they're nothing. They're nothing in the kingdom of God. And your word, um, which is settled in heaven, will reign eternal supreme glory. We thank you, Father. Uh, touch these thoughts. This evening, we just praise you in, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, just a little bit of recap. Um, in verse 31, if you continue or if you abide... If you're continuing to hear my word, I like that hearing. If you hear, continue to hear, then you are my disciples. Then you are just my disciples. Um, if you continue in the word, then you are my disciples. If you continue to hear, if you, if you abide in the word, if you, uh, if you continue to hear that word, then you are my disciples. And then the truth will set you free. Um, and, and I love that because the truth will set you free. And that truth is the word of God. And we are set free by the word of God. Not just the word, but also the teaching. This is why hearing is so important in this verse. It's the hearing of the word that sets us free. It's the teaching of the spirit of God. He is the spirit of truth. Right? John 14, 17. That becomes our teacher. And when the Holy Spirit teaches us, then we are set free, free indeed. Free indeed. And, and I love that. So we are, that's starting uh, this chapter. And now we're at the point where last week, if you remember, we have the two father system. Another father gets introduced. Jesus said, I seek my father and, and I respond and I speak on what I'm seeking and you're seeking your father. So he's bringing that other father in. Um, I think that's in 38. Yep. So, um, and, um, and he's, and they said, well, we, we, we are from our father, Abraham. And Jesus says, if you were from uh, Abraham, you wouldn't seek to kill me. You know, so, um, so then in 42, where we pick it up tonight, Jesus says to them, if God were your father, you would love me. If God were your father, then you would love me. For I proceed forth from my father. Neither came I of myself but he who sent me. If you were, if, if God were your father, you would love me. And, 
And then you would understand. You would have spiritual insight knowing that that's who I came from. And what I've told you this entire time is true. And, um, and, and I came, neither I came of myself, but God sent me. In, in Galatians 4.4, 4, it said, in the fullness of time, God sent his son. In the fullness, in the perfect moment of history, in the perfect realm of time, that's when God, when things were right according to God's overall plan, that's when he sent his son. It's in the perfect fullness of time. It, it was in the perfect ideal moment, in the proper place you know, of history, of what was going on in history. It was what was going on in the world, which the Jews were enslaved and in bondage to the Roman system. It was the perfect fullness of God's time. You know, we look at our circumstances and say, well, the, I'm not in a perfect situation. I don't like the situation I'm in. I don't like what's going on in the world. It's the perfect time. It's the perfect time. And so God sent his son, and it says then, uh, born of a woman and born under the law. But if you think about that, Jesus was sent. Jesus was sent. He's a sent one. He was sent, and maybe I'll re-hit that uh, um, Sunday because there's a lot more there, and I just don't have time to hit it tonight, so I'll go back into it. But Christ was sent. The Father sent the Son. The Son sent the Spirit. The Spirit sent the church, and the church sends us. We are sent. You know, you don't send yourself. A lot of people think we do. We are sent by the church. You can send yourself, you can have your own private ministry, but the covering is going to be obsolete because when the church sends you, it sends you um, from the body of Christ, from the living church of the living God. That's how we are sent. That's how we are sent. It's wonderful to be sent that way because it's content and we know it's God's will. When, when it's when it's done in that fashion, in that way. So God sent him. In verse 43, look at this. Why do you not understand my speech? Jesus says, why don't you understand what I'm saying? And, and he doesn't even give them a chance to answer. It's a question, but he doesn't let them answer it. He's going to answer for them. And he says, the reason why is because you cannot hear my word. You can't understand what I'm saying because you can't understand the word that is being spoken. You know, and, and, and I love this because, you know, you're not able to listen to my word. You're not able to hear my word. You're not able to understand anything that is being said because these words of mine, they are spirit. And you're trying to figure everything out naturally, but this is spiritual words. And believers sometimes get like that. They'll come to a service and they'll hear physically instead of learning to hear spiritually. This is why there's, a, there's an, an anointing on the ear. You know, there's anointing on the word. There's an anointing on the listener. A greater responsibility. We've talked about that before. You know, it's it's like in Hebrews 5.11 where uh, the writer of Hebrews says, why are you so dull of hearing? You're dull. You're dull of hearing. And that, and that word uh, in the Greek, uh, it, it's got a lot of these different meanings. It, it, even, it, it has some things that I don't even want to say. But uh, look it up. It's a pretty funny, you know, breakdown in the Strong's. But one of the things... It, it means that you are numb. You, know, you ever been numb? You ever get a shot in the tooth and your whole mouth is like numb? This is how our hearing is. We have become numb in our listening, in our capability. Listening to, to be able to, not just to hear that I know it, but to hear it that it gets deep within my heart, that it becomes living. 
turn in your Bibles. Um, look at look at this. Um, uh, Isaiah chapter six. Remember, Jesus even told me, he says, I have much to say to you. That's what he says in Hebrew. I have so much to say to it, but you can't comprehend it because you're numb. <laughs> Pretty amazing. You're dull. Your hearing is dull. Instead of a keen ear, a sharp ear, an ear that's, you know, wanting to hear, you're, you're, you're numb. You're numb and dull in it. Um, where did I say Isaiah 6? Yeah. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And uh, this is in the year of um, Uzziah the king, where, remember, the Lord was lifted up. But look at verse, um, where did I tell you to go, sir? Nine. Five? Nine. Mm, five is pretty good. Okay, we'll go to nine. <laughs> verse nine. And uh, remember, after, after, after God said, who shall we send? Isaiah said, send me. Remember, he was a man of unclean lips. And he hung around people who were unclean. And then the coal touched him. And from that point, he understood that, you know, being in the presence of God was not to look at himself, but to look, you know, to that he was seen in Christ even. And, um, and then he sends him, he sends Isaiah, and like Jeremiah, Isaiah's message will, will not be received, you know? And, and we think things are difficult as teachers and preachers, you know? The whole ministry of preaching, nobody's going to understand your message. That's amazing. And you know what? It's not our job to make them understand. Our job is to just keep preaching. It's the Holy Spirit that can energize and re um, uh, energize that individual and, and, and make the dead bones live. But in verse 8, so I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And he said, here I am, send I. And, and, and he said, go. And, and I love that. You know, it, it's not where, where are you sending me, God? Where, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What am I going to say? Not, none of that at all. It's just, just go. It's just go. And um, go and tell this people, Isaiah 6, 9. Hi, Christine. Hi. Um, tell this people, look at this. Hear ye indeed, but understand not. They're hearing words, but there's no understanding. There's no understanding what Isaiah is even saying. And understand, see indeed, but perceive not. They're short-sighted, you know, and they're, even in their hearing, there's no capacity. They are dull in, in their hearing. And how would we know truth and how would we know it sets us free if we are not hearing the spiritual side uh, not allowing the holy spirit to speak to us verse 10 make the heart of the people fat and make their ears heavy and that word heavy is dull so they uh, here's the same thing that they're dull of hearing their ears are heavy their ears are dull Unable to shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and be converted and be healed. That's amazing. Look at the progress. What happens when we hear properly? God starts to do something within our lives and he starts by healing us. This isn't, even though it includes a physical healing, this isn't really physical healing. This is a healing of body, soul, and spirit. And, and it's being touched by God. I am being touched. And when God touches you, you're, you're healed. You're healed. Um, so amazing how very easily we can be dull 
dull in our hearing and dull in our listening. And, and this is what Jesus is saying in John 8. So back to our text, John 8, um, 43. You know, it's, you know, you don't understand my speech because you are, you, because you cannot hear my words. Oh, Lord, let us hear your words. Let, let us hear your words, God. Let the words go forth from the pulpit with the power of the Holy Spirit and let us hear with spiritual understanding. Let us never be dull to your words, Lord. Let us never be familiar with your words, Lord. Let us be actively hearing your words. Let this, let these words never fall on, on, on dull hearing. Let us not just take it, but, but, you, but to receive what you have for us, God, in, in these moments, in these moments. Verse 44, John 8, 44. So remember last week, Jesus said, um, I speak which I have seen from my father, and you, you speak what you see from your father. And now he's going to tell them who that father is. Verse 44, you are of your father, the devil. That's amazing. They thought they were doing God's will. You are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, you're going to do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh from his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Satan cannot speak not one word of truth. Every projection that comes into your thought process is not truth. It's always a lie. It's always a lie. And by the way, Satan is never going to come and encourage you. He's always going to bring up your past, always going to bring up your faults, always going to bring up you know, everything that you've done. He's going to tell you you're not accepted. He's going to tell you you're a failure. He's going to tell you all these things are going to be whispered into your mindset. But remember who he is. It's a lie. And we must learn to get rid of that lie. We must learn to cast down that lie in 2 Corinthians 10, 5. It, we're, we don't want to entertain the lie. You start talking about a lie and entertaining the lie, you start believing the lie. We are not even to entertain that lie. We know where it's from. And it's not from God. Two, two thought processes come into your mind. One from the kingdom of God and one from the kingdom of darkness. There's no in between. There's no other thought. There's worldly thoughts that, oh, I got to do the dishes. You know, oh, I got to go shopping. I got to go to Publix. I, you know, those thoughts come in. But we're talking about thoughts that just pop into your mind. Either going to be of God or it's going to be of Satan. And, and when Satan speaks, and we'll get into that a little bit. Let me, let, me, let me just finish this part. So Jesus reveals their father. And you know what? Many believe, <clears throat> many believe that God is their father, but they don't know him. They know the name of God, so they claim him to be their father. You know, they don't believe in his word, and they don't believe in Jesus Christ. So how can you believe in God? You know, and this here, this teaching is, is called universalism. It's, it's where you see the stickers coexist. That's them. They're everywhere. And they, they believe in reconciliation. So they'll use words. Reconciliation is a big word to them. And they say God is reconciling the whole world to himself, which they use, which, which is acceptance theology. Everybody's accepted. Just come as you are, and you're accepted. You can bring whatever you want, and you're accepted. We want to accept all thinking, all thought process, and you cannot condemn somebody else for thinking the way they're doing. Because... Their thoughts are, that's their God. They are, they are right in it. So, you know, it's, it's just very dangerous teaching, you know. 
and teaching of acceptance. When you teach acceptance, there's no there's no sin. There's there's no um, uh, it's without repentance. The religion is without repentance. It's without Christ. It's without the cross. You don't need any of those things because you're accepted. We're going to accept you in your own lifestyle and go ahead and live however way you want. In the end, God will restore us all. And, and we go tiptoeing through the Wizard of Oz, you know. <laughs> but, but that's their belief. That's the acceptance of, and it's very, very dangerous, and it's becoming very, very popular. Because people are sick of religion, and that's what they attack. They go after that, even though they're a cult. You know, it's pretty. It's pretty funny. You know, so um, very dangerous teaching. So, um, and, and by the way, there's there's nobody that has to pay for sin. So that's why it eliminates Christ. We don't need a savior. We're gonna we're gonna be our own God, and we're gonna save ourselves. Okay, so. That's that's what they're they're talking about here. Let's look at this. Um, let's look at this. Um, let's look at this sin issue here, and understanding why we need Christ, and, and then we'll hit up Satan a little bit here at the end, and we'll call it. Uh, turning your Bibles to First John chapter three. used my mask and I was a bookmarker. <laughs> First John chapter 3. <laughs> yeah. First John 3. They give you 4? Mm -hmm. Okay. Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law and by the way this is speaking of a person who habitually lives in sin they don't want to be delivered they don't want to be they're living in it they look at themselves and they don't think that God sees that way okay so verse 5 and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him, look at that, in him is what? No sin. No sin, because he never committed sin. But in Christ is no sin. And if we're in Christ, there's no sin. Doesn't mean we don't sin. We're talking about the new creation. The new creation is perfect and and. and John is really trying to drill this point home. It's really good. Verse 6, whoever bideth in him sins not. Well, she's pastor. I'm sinning all the time. Well, maybe you're not abiding in him. That new creation. We must start to think of ourselves in that new creation, not the old sin nature. We're always The, the old sin nature is always going to be with us. But to sin less. By living in the new creation. If I'm always fellowshipping with my old past, I'm going to be constantly reminded by Satan of my old past. But if I'm living in the new creation, the Holy Spirit's going to remind me of that. And those uh, that I'm seated above, that I'm holy, that I'm righteous, you know, and I don't feel that way, but it doesn't go by a feeling. Whoever sinneth not, Whoever sinneth had not seen him, neither have known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. I love that. And we are not to be deceived by that. Verse 8, he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. And from this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. For the purpose of sin, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is amazing. 
This is why we got victory over these areas of our lives that we're struggling with. Because Christ was manifested in the flesh. And he died for those sins. And now we are crucified with Christ. And now we no longer live, but it's Christ that lives within me in Galatians 2.20. And now that life becomes this new life. And there is no sin in the new creation. Never saying we don't sin, because we do. But restoration is beautiful too. Verse 9, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. He's talking of the new creation. The new cre if you're born of God, if you've been born again, the new creation does not sin, folks. It's incredible. It's amazing. His seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So what is that seed? That seed is the gospel. It's what Christ has done for us. That seed abides within me. I remain in that. But what a different way to think. Instead of thinking defeated and guilty and having shame and condemnation in my life all the time. This is living in victory. This is living in liberty. This is walking in the spirit. In this, the children of God are manifest. That's how we are manifest. And, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So that righteousness is what? It's, it's a gift. Righteousness is a gift from God. This is, this is how, you know, this is how righteousness is imputed to us. So when Christ sees us, and Pastor Scheller hit this, I think, Sunday, one, one of the ones that you were telling me, I, got to, I finally got to, Listen to it. Um, it's it's the word justification. And if you write that out, just if it can, it's just as if you've never sinned. It's how God looks upon you. It's not how we look upon ourselves. We we look at ourselves and we see a mess. God looks at us and sees his son. And we are in Christ. What a what an outlook. Because that, that should just set you free. So Satan is a liar. Back to John, Satan is a liar, and he speaks lies, and he spoke a lie from the beginning. Remember in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 and 5? And shall you surely, God, did God say you shall surely die? You're not going to die, lie. And you know what? There was death there. And everybody says, well, they didn't die. Oh, yes, they did. <laughs> they surely died. That the separation from God died. That relationship was dead. You know, God came for restoration immediately, but they didn't know it now. They didn't understand it. And all of a sudden, guilt and shame and, oh, oh, I need a covering. Nobody wants to see me walking around like this, you know. <laughs> but, that, but that's what took place. The lie, the lie. We believe the lie. The lie gets spoken and we grab onto it and believe it's truth. How much of a lie is being spoken today? Yeah. Lots of lies. You know, lots of lies. Because it's the world is going to conform us and track us the way they, that the world, the way the world is going. But we are, to remember Sunday? Be ye separate. Be ye separate. We are to be separate from that. Not, we're not saying don't have wisdom. We need a lot of wisdom today because we, mu we must hear that still small voice. That's the direction we are go want to be going. Not the way of the world, not the way of the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eye. Not that route, the, that narrow, that, 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 that road of grace that is in part. So he's a liar. He's a liar from the beginning. He's always been a liar. That's his, everything that he does is within the lie, is within the lie. So, so here, Jesus, basically your father is the father of lies. He's always been a liar. He's always is a liar. And so when Satan, and by the way, a little bit about him, he accuses the brethren day and night. Revelations 12, 10, always accusing. Now, since we know who he is, are those accusations true? They're a lie. 
We might, they might be honestly true about us, but that's not who we are in the new creation. Because you know what? God does not know one of your sins. He's removed them. He's not seeing you in that sin no more. He's not seeing us. And, and, and boy, that is, that is amazing hope that I can receive God's mercy new, which is new right now, and I can now walk in that today. I don't have to worry about yesterday. It's gone. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. It's not here. Just let's walk in the spirit now. Walk in the newness of life. Walk in that newness of life. That, that becomes our walk. So, um, so he, he accuses them day and night. He deceives. He deceived them. And he deceives all the nations. Revelations 20, verse 10. So accusing is 12, 10. And, um, and then uh, uh, deceiving the entire nations and all, everybody. Revelations 20, 10. And, um, and, 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 and with the desires, with the desires, um, it, it, you want to see a description of, of Satan. Uh, it's, it's, it's Ezekiel 28, 28, 11 talks about him and, and, and how the, a little bit of what the Antichrist is going to be. But, um, they, they say that the desires of your father you will do. And that's where it talks about the lust of the um, 1 John 2, 16, 1 John 2, 16 and 17. The lust of the flesh, the pride of life, all those things that are, that, and, and, that, and, and, and those are desires. Those are desires of the flesh. And Satan wants to put desires in your heart. He wants you to have desires because desires are satisfied by what you see. Are desires satisfied by what you smell? I love smelling when that cooking is going. And I, now I got a desire. I need to eat some of that. Sorry, Pastor Keith. Pastor Keith's on a diet. He's doing so good. Week one, baby. Week one, man. Yeah, he's serious. He's serious. He's, uh, what, is, what was that thing that you ran? Really? So he puts all these desires out there. These are des and, and the world creates all these desires. You need to have this. You need to live this way. You need to look a certain way to be acceptable, to be liked, to be loved by loved by what? Yeah, loved by you know. All the perverts looking at you? Is that, I mean, you want to look, you know. But it's true. It's its what it is. It's what it is out there. But you know what? We have to adapt to them and, and everything else. But, uh, yeah. But there's all these desires in the world. The, the, all these desires. The, the love of money. It's a desire. The love to be known and famous. A, a desire. The love to want. All these things. And these are all material products and material products will go to waste, you know, and none of them will, they will all be burnt up because none of those things matter and they are wood, hay, and stubble. And even the works uh, of the flesh, the works of the flesh will all be destroyed. They're all, they're all desires. Everything from the flesh is a desire. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need this. And I, and I start needing all these things. And they're just desires. They're even greater than wants. You know, wants are up there too, but a desire is stronger because a desire is, a, is like a magnetic pull. I'm, I'm pulled to this. I need this. You know, I want this. And, and that is how it is explained in 1 John 2, 16 and 17. So he speaks the lies. He's the father of lies. And there is no truth in him. The truth sets us free. There's no truth in Satan at all. There's no truth in the world. There's no truth in the world system. It's all a lie. The whole thing is probably, it's all a lie to fit the world's agenda, to, uh, to try to get people herded in, in, in a direction that they want to dictate. And they do a great job of it. 
Every single situation does a great job of it. Watch how things are going to be moving very quickly, and it's moving already. And, and it's even leaning very, very heavily to the left in, 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 um, in socialism right now. Heavily pull. Heavily pull in socialism. And, and, and you know what? Like uh, Albert was explaining, there's not one socialistic system that has ever lasted. It, it's complete failure. Socialism will also lead basically to communism. And, 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 and it's sad. It is sad. We must love people where they're at. We must reach people with the gospel and tell them they are loved. They are so greatly loved. Jesus Christ loves them. He loves them with an everlasting love. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God. We just give you praise and glory this evening. We thank you for your great grace, the great grace that saved us and delivered us and gave us a, a promise and gave us a new vision and gave us a desire, not for the things of the world, but for the things of God. That's what's put in my heart. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Those that can give to the ministry, GGC Miami. Uh, if you can go there, ggcmiami.com in the upper right-hand corner, there's a donate button. If you could give to the work, we really, really appreciate it. Lord, thank you for the offering in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Gotcha. I'm sorry for some of the words I used. <laughs> Wait till the letters.